minister to them. We want to welcome you all to our services this evening and hope that you'll pray along with us. You have many prayers and we have many prayers as well. And we're praying for you. We're praying for your family. But we want to pray for uh, our president. We want to pray that God would move by the power of his Holy Spirit in his life. We want to pray for all of the people that are there giving him the best counsel that he can possibly get. Uh, the Bible says that a multitude of counselors uh, there is wisdom. But we all need more than anything to go to the mighty counsel of Jesus Christ. Uh, that our hearts will always be open to what he has to say to our lives. And we will be moved by that. Uh, we want to pray for all the nations uh, of the earth that are facing the same thing that we're facing. Uh, this coronavirus and locked down, locked up and all kinds of things. But the word of God is not locked out. Uh, and so we want to... Uh, pray also for the first responders and for all of those uh, that are on the front line, the front line responders, our doctors, our nurses, uh, our uh, uh, EMTs, all of those that are there uh, doing all that they can to be a part of winning this war against this virus. Uh, we want to pray for your family right there where you are. You know, that you would grab each other's hand and hold on to each other and draw near to Jesus. As we draw closer to Jesus, uh, we draw closer to each other, and he'll help you uh, in this time. We want to pray uh, for Brian Zapata's aunt, Yolanda Novera. Uh, she's a pediatrician. She's a frontline responder that contracted coronavirus. Uh, I heard she was doing better, but just as she was doing better, her husband also uh, was brought into the hospital, so we want to pray for him. That's uh, Sonny. We want to pray for the Tucson uh, congregation, the Tucson Door Christian Fellowship there. During this 40-day fast that they've started, uh, I'm fasting today, and we'll be fasting, and you're all welcome uh, to uh, to join in that. You would go to the door.church.live. You can get on there. There's many prayers. I've been praying for many, many people. Most of them I don't even know who they are, but it doesn't matter if you know who they are. Your prayers really do count. And people are are, are you know, Facing many, many things when you see them put their prayer requests on that line. They put them up there each day, and people all over the world are praying for them. So if you have a special prayer request, please go to that site. Put it on. Join, uh, join with us in that fast as well, and pray for the things in your life uh, that really need to do. They have a number of prayer targets uh, that they're trying to take care of. Uh, and one of that is that God would move through all the live stream services uh, that are going out, uh, and he would confirm his word uh, with signs and wonders, that God would give people divine encounters in this time of social uh, restriction, uh, that God's word would bring healing uh, and strength uh, and guidance to all those. Uh, and so we're praying for the end of this pandemic, uh, that this thing to come to pass and finish it, and that all that God would do. Uh, they're also praying for their conference center there in Tucson. Uh, I don't know where it is, and it'll be completed in a timely and a safe manner as well as the financial provisions uh, that they would need for that. And we want to pray for all the local churches and pastors that are live streaming uh, this evening and all their congregations as well. We want to pray for miracles, that people will be healed in their bodies. I've read a number of accounts of people being healed uh, uh, simply right there in their own living room, uh, in the hospital beds. Uh, we want to pray. We want to pray for a number of individuals too. We want to pray for Tammy Kramer needs a miracle of God healing her in cancer that God would do a miracle in her life uh, and heal that woman. We want to pray uh, for uh, all these that are that are just so lost in this time that they would just look to Jesus Christ. We want to pray for deliverance from habits and addictions. Uh, we want to pray for the those that have an oppression of their mind and their emotions. Uh, we want to pray for miracle finances. I mean, everybody's looking for their stimulus. I haven't got mine yet, but I'm looking forward to getting mine. But I'll tell you what, people get excited. They get stimulated when they see you're going to get a stimulus. <laughs> but you got to watch out for free money. you got to watch out. I'll be happy to get mine. You'll be happy to get yours. But let me tell you, God can do a whole lot more than that. We want to pray for Gerardo and Maricela and their family. They've just gotten a home, and they've just moved in. God's miraculously moved on their behalf. And so we want to pray for them in their new home. I want to pray for these pastors that are overseas. I want to pray for Alan and Karen Taylor in Belfast, Ireland. Uh, we want to pray for William and Mary Ortiz uh, in uh, Bolivia, La Paz, Bolivia. We want to pray for Jason and Shelby Bruce uh, there in Trinidad. We want to pray for uh, for Adam Peeble and his wife Lizette that are there in, what's the name of the place? Belize. They're all people all over. I'm contacting them. They're contacting me, and I'm praying for them. And uh, I really want to encourage you to pray.
pray for God to continue to do all that he wants to do in your time. And we're going to pray that as we finish praying, perhaps Sunday, you can come and, uh, and open us in prayer. Father, right now, in the name of your Son, Jesus, God, we're asking you to do all that you can do in the end
It's a very powerful time when people, uh, they're going to be asked to get a mark on their right hand and their forehead. I don't know the full understanding of that. Maybe I've watched too many Bible prophecy movies, but I don't think so. Maybe you need to watch some more. You need to see some more. Because they'll really keep your eyes open to what they you know, I think, I think very biblically because that's what I don't want to think world wise. Every time I think about things, and that's what this sermon is all about. You're going to see all the different languages that we're using. But, you know, when you look at this, we already have the mark on our right hand. We already have the mark on our forehead. Because most of our mind is always thinking about the stimulus, the money. <laughs> and our hands are always busy trying to get some more. But that's not the mark. I don't know. Maybe it's the mark I was talking about. But I do know this, uh, that the blessing of God is going to be upon all those lives uh, whose minds and hearts uh, are set upon Jesus and whose hands are busy about his business. And I want to encourage you. I really have been so encouraged by those of you that have continued to support uh, the church, uh, sending that money in either uh, on a line or, on, or sending that coming in checks or whatever, however it happens. Uh, it's just been a tremendous encouragement to me that you want a church here in Guyana. And that's why we're here, because you're a support and the things that we can do. There are a couple of different ways that you can give. You can give online if you go at almost anywhere on our website, there's a click button that you can go. And there's an online giving button that you can click on that button. And then when that comes up, there's a, a you can go to the door, sp.com or sp.4j.com. And, and you go there and you click on that online button and it comes up, it's quite easy, it only takes a number of seconds. You know how all those things work. They work well when you go to Walmart, they work well when you go to any place. So, uh, but so I like, I like to thank those that are working well, coming in church and, uh, and, and the blessing of God be on your lives. Praise God. If you have your Bibles this evening, I would like for you to open with me to the book of Revelations in chapter 22. I want to speak to you for a few moments about live stream. We're on live stream. That's one of the words that's been going around in my head, trying to understand it, trying to work it, trying to see how it'll work for me. And I want to talk to you about a new live stream, a new live stream. And I don't know where you've been serving. Most people can't serve right now. They're not allowed to serve. And I don't know where you're body surfing or, 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 or paddleboard surfing or kite surfing. Nobody's doing that. Most people are internet surfing at the moment. And I don't know what you've been swimming, but my mind has been swimming. I've been drowning in, in all of these uh, different terms uh, that come up. Live stream or Facebook or YouTube and Instagram and links uh, and likes and follows and notifications and uh, you know, pandemic uh, flatten the curve, uh, you know, face masks in order to buy or sell to help humanity. Self-quarantine, self-isolate, comorbidity. That's what I have here, comorbidity. You're going to hear about all these tonight. COVID-19. It's like a new language that has been going on. But 24-7, we are bombarded with this new language. Can we stop? Can we just stop for a moment to, and, 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 and have a, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's messing with my head. It's on cruel, trying to figure out how to work all these things. Well, I had a, a, a call from a, a good friend of mine in Belfast, Ireland, named Alan Taylor. And he made a statement how our life of sin clouds everything, makes everything murky, makes everything cloudy, makes everything uh, murky and muddy and cloudy and confusing. And when we come to Jesus Christ, this cloudy, murky, dirty life uh, is made clean in a life of righteousness. And all of a sudden, everything begins to make sense. Everything's so clear. Everything's so clean. And I want to talk to you about that live stream. Because there's really two live streams going on. There's a live stream going on that leads to death. There's a live stream that's going on that leads to life. In your life, is on the live stream 24 7. So I want to talk about those three thoughts. And I want to read out of the book of Revelations uh, in chapter 22. Uh, Bible prophecy is not given to us uh, to scare us, but to prepare us. And if we're not, if you're, if you're not, if you're scared, then you're not really that really prepared. 
areas for it. Take some time and read the two chapters, chapter 22 and chapter 21 of the book of Revelation. It might take you all of 15 minutes. And you got plenty of time on your hands right now. So it would be wise. Because the Bible says in the first book of Revelation, there's a blessing on people who read that. So let's read Revelation chapter 22. I'm just going to read a few verses there. It says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and from the Lamb of God. In the middle of its street, on either side of the river, there was a tree of life which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more cur I mean curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for all that you're doing in our hearts and in our lives. God, I pray you move by the power of your Holy Spirit. You illuminate your scripture. God, that we would be prepared for the greatest event on the face of this earth. God, that we're going to see you face to face, oh Lord. We're going to have some face time with you, oh God. Father, I pray we do that as much as we can right here, right now. God, we don't have any, any confidence in our flesh. Our confidence is in our faith in you and in you, Lord, and in your word, oh God. Your word is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, able to separate man from sin or man from the Lord. Oh God, separate us from the sin that your word says so easily besets all of us in Jesus' name. Why don't you think, first of all, about this live stream that leads to death? Jesus is showing a vision of a live stream of life to John. And there's also some live streams that go to death as well. And they were shown not only to John, but shown to others as well. And our scripture in Revelation 22, 1 says, And he showed me. Can God show you tonight something? Can he show you something tonight? He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as a crystal, and proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Bible prophecy is not given to scare us. Bible prophecy is given to prepare us. And if we're scared, then we're not prepared. I'm talking about a live stream. Jesus is showing a live stream. He showed that same stream to Ezekiel 600 years earlier. And we're going to look at that a little bit more. And there are other live streams that he showed to the other prophets. Live streams of death. Live stream is the first term in my new language. It's still spinning around in my, in my little head. And I want to look at that. I want to look at all the ones that I mentioned. And I want to see how they relate biblically. In the book of Proverbs, in chapter 16, 25, it says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. The live stream is the first term in my new language that I want to look at. And there's a stream of life that looks good. There's a way that looks good to a man, but in the end, it's death. A stream of death. How many have been there? How many have been sailing down that stream? You thought it was a pretty smooth stream, and by the end, it was death. In the book of Psalms, chapter 124, verse 2, it says, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters would have overwhelmed us, and the stream would have gone over our soul. The swollen waters would have gone over our soul. I would say that that's a pretty accurate description of how a lot of people feel today. Overwhelmed and the stream. If it wasn't for the Lord that leads to us, overwhelmed in all that's going on, I, I would say swallowed up. And so I, I would say that's a pretty, pretty good reference and a pretty good understanding of how we feel. There are other references to this live stream that leads to death by other prophets as well. You know, the Bible is such an incredible book. And so let's look at another one, the book of Isaiah, in chapter 30, verse 28. It says, His breath is an overflowing stream, 
which reaches up to the neck to sift the nations with the sieve of, sieve of futility. And there's a bridle in the jaws of the people, causing them to err. For Tophet was established of old. Yes, for the king, it is prepared. He has made it deep and large, and its fire is a fire with much wood. And the breath of the Lord is like a stream of brimstone. And he kindles it. Isaiah prophesies about a stream that's going to sift the nations. I, I say we're in that stream. That's going to shift that nation, shift them, sift them. And it's, that stream's going to go up to their neck. And you feel like sometimes you're up to your neck and you're going to go on? I, I know I do. That stream uh, is also going to be one full of brimstone and fire. I'm talking about a live stream of death. I'm talking about a live stream of life. Daniel uh, uses the same imagery. He would prophesy. He used the same language, the same imagery, and imagery of, of live stream that, that leads to death. It's just radical. You know, we think God, we got some ideas about God, but when I read about how people saw God and what happened to them when they saw them, Daniel chapter 7, verse 9 says, I watched till the thrones were put in place, and the Ancient of Days was seated, and his garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was pure wool. And the throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a, a burning fire. And a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. And thousands upon thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. And the court was seated, and the book was opened. Listen, it's time for you and I to open the book now and to see what's going on. So I want to look at some of the other words besides live stream that have been swimming around in my head and drowning in my mind. I want to look at how they relate biblically. I've already done one message on biblical coronavirus, COVID-19. This pandemic that is there, we want to think about that. Self-quarantine is another word, self-isolate, comorbidity. Flatten the curve and, and other ones. So let's start with the crown virus, the coronavirus, that false king that is ruling the world, making uh, every move uh, be, uh, we have being dictated by that. When in fact there's a true king, uh, Jesus Christ. The thought that came to my mind as I saw it, it was really good. It was just, it says, Christ over virus, infectious diseases. I, I love those things. Self-quarantine. Let me tell you, let me tell you, I think people have been self-quarantined for a long time. They've been way too quarantining themselves. Quarantining themselves from Jesus, quarantining themselves from other people. The social media, as far as I'm concerned, has not brought people closer together. I can't wait to get back together with people when I can talk to them face to face and look at them. I, I, I'm, not, you know, I'm glad that we can do this, but let me tell you, it does not compare to me, and I'm all, I'm all face to face, voice to voice. From my perspective, learning this new language has been unbelievable. Social isolation. People have been socially isolated themselves for a long time. They isolate themselves into themselves. And they've been isolating themselves from Jesus as well, and other people as well. And in these terms, I think they all of all of them differently. They isolate themselves, thinking they're being social, but really that's not social. The Bible says in Proverbs in chapter 18 and verse 1, a man who isolates himself seeks his own desires, and he rages against all wise judgment. A fool has no delight in understanding, but in expressing his own heart. Very powerful. I'm talking isolation. I'm talking people who isolate themselves all the time. And you can't tell me you isolate yourself more on social media than anything else in the world. I'm not saying that we should be neglecting all of the safety standards and safety precautions that are being given. I'm just really trying to bring all of these words that are rolling around in my head and 
give you a biblical perspective of a, of a life stream of death and a life stream of life. Facebook, uh, live stream. Can I tell you something? We're going to we're going to face the book. We're going to face the book. Let me tell you something else. You've been getting all kinds of notifications. <laughs> Jesus has been sending notifications to you and I for a long time. He's also been telling you what he likes and what he dislikes. And he's also trying to bring friends to you and help you to be a follower of his. And let me tell you nothing. There's going to be a real Instagram real soon. <laughs> There's going to be a real Instagram real soon. Jesus is coming. And if you think what's going on now is bad, you've got no understanding. I mean, I've never seen anything like this in my life. I, I've, every place that I go to has a, 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 an orange cone with a no parking sign. I can't believe that. Where did they get all of these orange cones from? Where did they get all these no parking signs from? Barricades everywhere. I see them everywhere. They must have been stockpiling these for a long time. I don't know. But I've never seen one. You know, the other thing is, how bad is it? Someone coughs and you duck. You think a bullet's gone off. Someone sneezes and you think a bullet's gone off. <laughs> all I know is that in one moment, we're going to be gone. It's like this changed overnight. Overnight, we know one thing, and they've been gradually bringing out new changes, and I understand it's for our, our good. But I wonder. But I know something that's going to be in our good. A live stream. A life. The Bible says in First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22, 52, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, the trumpet is going to sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. We're going to be changed. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. I don't want to flatten the curve. I don't want to stay ahead of the curve. I, I just don't want to get on the curve at all. As I think about the curve, it's easy to change one letter there, too. You become the curse. I don't want the curse. The earth is cursed. God wants to bring blessing in our life. And the earth is the one that is cursed. No more. And I'll wear the mask for the good of humanity to buy or sell, but I won't take the mark. I've seen too many prophecy movies, maybe. Maybe you haven't seen enough, like I said before. Things that were done 30 years ago, they're like the newspaper today. Comorbidity. Man, I read that word. What the heck is that? Comorbidity is like made up of two words, co and morbid. Comorbidity basically means that people have existing, pre-existing other conditions in their life and that complicate the fact when they get this coronavirus, which makes it easier for it to have its way in their life. Comorbidity. Pre-existing conditions that make it easier for us to take place and for you to die. And I tell you, we all have comorbidities. <laughs> we got skin in our life that makes it so easy for the devil to come in and do what he wants to do. Where people even blame God. In the book of Jeremiah, talking about the life stream of death there, in verse 18, it says, Why is my pain perpetual? And why is my wound incurable? Which refuses to be healed. Will you surely be to me like an unreliable stream, as waters that fail? Even to the point where they'll blame God. God's not reliable? Are you kidding? The next verse goes on in verse 19 and says, Therefore, thus says the Lord, If you return, then I will bring you back. You shall stand before me. If you take out the precious from the vial, you shall be as my mouth. Let them return to you, but you must not return to them. So there's no shortage of scripture about the live stream of death. Let's look at the live stream of life. Secondly tonight, the last our scripture that we were reading, uh, in verse 1, it says, He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as a crystal, 
proceeding from the throne of God and the Lamb. And in the middle of the street, on either side of the river, there was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each of those trees yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations, and there shall be no more curse, no more curse. But the throne of God and the Lamb and his servants shall serve him. Jesus is showing John. Can he show you this morning, this evening? Can he show you some things this evening? Can he show you how much he loves you? He's sending an instant messenger to you all the time. He's giving you notifications all the time. I said notification, it's not negotiation. It is not negotiable. It's definitely face time. It's definitely face time. It's time to face the time. All Jesus wants to do and be to you and to me. All he has for our live stream, that stream of life that he has for every one of us. You know, one word that you keep hearing over and over and over and over again is unprecedented. Unprecedented. The whole world is seeing this happen all at the same time. The word unprecedented means it's never been seen before, never been done before, unheard of, epic making. Can I tell you what we're going through life is epic right now. This is an epic live stream. This is an epic notification to you and to me. You know, when I think about the mask and I walk around, I ride around in my car and I see people all with the mask. And maybe it isn't that God just doesn't want us to stop and hear him. Maybe he wants to put something over our mouth and we stop talking long enough to hear him. As one who talks a lot, I, that's, why, that's the way my mind thinks. As I see these people with masks. Maybe he just wants us to stop telling him how we should This is an epic, epic live stream. The world does not have the answer and for humanity, nor will it ever have the answer for humanity. Science does not have the answer, and the science will not have the answer for humanity. The answer is Jesus, and it's going to be epic. Revelations of chapter 1, verse 7 says, Behold, he is coming in the clouds. Every eye will see him, even he, they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so. Amen. Behold, he's coming in the clouds. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. That's what he's going to be doing. Moving for you and I. You know, my prayer is that your eye will see him. My prayer is that you'll get into the live stream of life. And not only just get there, you'll stay in that live stream that leads to life. Isaiah would prophesy about this live stream that, that leads to life. In Isaiah 66 and verse 12, he says, These are thus says the Lord. Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory to the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then you shall feed on her sides, you shall be carried and dandled on her knees as one whom his mother comforts. So I will comfort you, and she shall be comforted in Jerusalem. When you see this, your heart shall rejoice, your bones shall flourish like grass, and the hand of the Lord shall be known to his servants and his indignation Ooh. to his enemies. Isaiah prophesies about this live stream, who it's offered to. It's offered to the heathen. It's offered to the Gentiles. The glory of the heathen, the glory of the Gentiles. That's who it's offered to. What does it bring you? Peace like a river, I've got peace like a river. The live stream. The glory of the heathen. Isaiah prophesied about it. Jesus prophesied.
prophesied about the live stream of life and the live stream of death. In the book of Luke, in chapter 6 and verse 46, it says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my saying and does them, I'll show you who he's like. He's like a man building a house who dug deep, laid the foundation on the rock, and when the floods rose and the stream beat vehemently against that house, it could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. Not if, the, not if, but when, when it happens. When the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that, against that house, and it could not shake it because it was founded on the rock. That's what this live stream is all about. This live stream is a live stream of life. You know, my prayer is that your house will be like that house, founded on the rock. The live stream of death can come, but it can't take out because you're the live stream of life. And my prayer is that that will be your house, and that will be the people under your roof, your children, your children's children. We are the leaves that will bring that healing to the nations. Revelations 22 and verse 2 says these words, In the middle of the street, on either side of the river, was the river of life, was, was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits each yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of, of the tree were for the healing of the nations. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. We heeded the notification. We faced the book. We faced time. We became followers of Jesus and friends of Jesus and like everything he's doing. We are the leaves of that tree that will bring the healing to the nations. John chapter 15 verse 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do Nada. Do we squat? Zero. Nothing. Without him, we can do nothing. No true words were ever spoken. No true words were ever spoken. Jesus says, without him, you can do nothing. And we all have a lifetime of proof of that. So we got to stop trying to do life without the creator of life, without the sustainer of life. Jesus is the air I breathe, not coronavirus affected air. Jesus is the air I breathe. He breathed into me in my mother's womb in 1947. He breathed again into me and made me become a living being, born again. June 16th, my 32nd birthday, 1979. No one and nothing can take that birth of life from me. Except Jesus. And when he's ready, I'm probably more than ready myself. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27 says, It is appointed for a man to die once, and after this is the judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time. This time, he's coming for salvation. You say, what do you mean I'm already saved? No, he saved you from sin. 
This time he's going to take you home to heaven. He will come a second time. He will come a second time. And this time, it's for salvation. Not from sin. He's taking care. He takes care of the sin question like this. The salvation question, he's working in our lives 24 7, trying to bring us out of the life stream of death into the life stream of life. And it's much better to die to our selfish self and enter the life stream of life that leads to life than it is to, you know, to, to stay in the life stream of death. It's better to, be, to die once and be born again to a new life, to a new stream of life, to a new life stream, than it is to die a thousand times over in the life stream of death. Let me finish then with the life stream of your life. Because your life is live streaming 24 7. 24 7. It's streaming. Every day, every moment of every day, there's a live stream going on, man, in heaven. Every thought that enters our mind, what's flowing out of your life? What are your thoughts like? Is there a river of life flowing there, or is there a river of death? Uh, it, it's a pure river that God wants me in. I'd like to say that my thoughts are pure 24 7, but they're not. God doesn't judge you for the thoughts, He judges you what you do with them and how long you want to do. You can't stop a bird from landing on your head, but you can decide how long you're going to let it stay there and do what birds want to do. I'm talking about the live stream of life. What's flowing? Amos was a prophet. And he was preaching and bringing to the people of Israel. Saying, listen, I don't care about all your trappings. All your religious trapping doesn't mean anything to me. It doesn't mean anything to God. All the religious uh, jargon and the religious gymnastics and the religious calisthenics. God wants to bring a stream of righteousness to us. Let's look at this chapter 5 and verse 20. It says, Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light? Is it not very dark with no brightness in it? Listen to what he says. I hate I despise your feast days. I do not savor your sacred assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them. Nor will I regard your fat and peace offerings. Take away from me the noise of your songs, for I will not hear the melody of all your stringed instruments. But what? But let justice run down like water. Righteousness like a mighty stream. Like a pure river of water. Like a pure stream moving through your life and my life. Amos uh, speaks about this mighty stream of life of righteousness. A live stream that moves through our life that only comes from Jesus Christ. Before John ever had the live stream vision from Jesus, he records Jesus describing this live stream. In the chapter before, this is why I encourage you to read John 20, sorry, Revelation 21 and 22. In Revelation 21 4, he's describing this live stream. This is the one I'm looking forward to. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death. There will be no more sorrow. There will be no more crying. There will be no more pain. And the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things, all things, all things, all things new. And he said to me, Write these words. Write for these words are true and faithful. Then he said to me, It's done. I'm the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. I'm the fountain of the water of life, freely to him who thirsts. 
live stream that feeds to life, given freely to you and I. A live stream, uh, who wants that live stream? Do you want that live stream? I want that live stream. I want that live stream. No more tears, no more sorrow, no more death, no more pain. Bible prophecy is not given to scare us. Bible prophecy is given to prepare us. And if we're scared, then we're probably not prepared. These words are true and faithful. You know there are some faithful and true words around. There are a lot of fake news around. All kinds of things are going on the end. And I tell you, whenever I get something from somebody, I always look at it and say, where did this come from? I spend probably, you know, a good half an hour researching anything that anybody sends to me because there's so much fake news out there. But we have the good news. Let's get it out there any way that we can. Let's get it out there as often as we can. Let's get in the live stream. Oh, the live stream that leads to life. This is the Jesus that I know. This is the live stream that he has for you and I. It's beyond life. It's better than this life. It's way beyond that. It's better than death itself. I don't know how many times you've experienced that live stream of death that taken you away from Jesus. Way too many, I'm sure. Psalm 107 uh, and verse uh, uh, 35 says, uh, He turns the wilderness into pools of water and the dry land into water springs. That river of life stream, he's the one that turns it to. The word of God is so rich. The word of God is so true. The word of God is so life-changing. The word of God is a life stream that's flowing all the time. You know who that word of God is? Jesus. This is the life stream. This is a live stream, a live stream of life, a live stream of life. Take some time to read Revelations 21, 22. This was written by the last apostle, last apostle, the last words of the last apostle that was left alive. And these are the last two chapters of the word of God by the last apostle that was left alive. They couldn't kill him. Why? Because God wanted you to know about the live stream of life. He also wanted you to know about the live stream of death. He also wanted you to know that you're live streaming right now, 24-7. Let me leave you with the prophecy that Ezekiel spoke. Because Jesus was just repeating what they should have known anyway. He was repeating what they should have known. And this is 600 early years earlier. Ezekiel wrote these words. God spoke to him, and it says in verse 1 of chapter 47, Then he brought me to the back door of the temple. There was the water flowing from underneath the threshold of the temple, towards the east, from the front of the temple, and it faced as east. And the water was flowing from under the right side of the temple, of the south of the altar. And he said, Son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me, he returned me to the bank of the river, and when I returned there, along the banks of the river, there were very many trees on one side and the other. And he said to me, the water flows towards the eastern region. It goes down into the valley, and it enters the sea. And when it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. Even the salt sea where nothing lives will become flowing again in live stream. The Dead Sea, that dead place, man, is dead. It's rich minerally. Got all kinds of wealth, literally. But there's nothing living in it. But even that, when the waters of life come down there, verse 9 says, And it shall be that every living thing that moves where the rivers go, it'll live. There'll be a great multitude of fish in that dead sea, in that salt sea, because the waters that go there, for they will be healed, and everything will be living wherever that river goes. The same vision that he gave to John, read it. There in Ezekiel, you can read the whole thing. Because when you read the whole chapter of Ezekiel, you see the whole story. The Lord showed Ezekiel hundreds of years before he showed John. 
But when you read Ezekiel's account, he talks about, you know what, I stepped into the river, but I didn't want to step too far. I didn't want to step too quick. And the river was up to my ankles. And then I stepped a little further. And the river was up to my knees. And then I stepped a little further. And the river was up to my neck. And I stepped a little further. And I had to swim. When I got to the other side, the leaves, the peelations were there. The leaves that healed the nations were there. Healed even the Dead Sea. Even the salt sea healed everything and everyone. Wherever this live stream goes, uh, the healing goes. Uh, in our scripture, let's return to it and finish this off. Uh, Revelations 22 1 says, He showed me a pure river, a water of life, uh, clear as a crystal, proceeding from the throne of God uh, and the love of the Lamb. And in the middle of its street, uh, and on either side of the river, there was a tree of life, uh, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. Uh, the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations, and there was no more curse, no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb of God shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. The pure river, the pure live stream, the healing of all the nations, no more curse, no more curse, serve him. And he'll give you that pure language that I preached about the other day. To serve him, to serve Jesus in the live stream that leads to life. Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 9. For then I will restore to the people a pure language. They may call on my name, the Lord, to serve him with one accord. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my worshippers, the daughter of my first ones, shall bring me an offering. I came from beyond that river. I brought him that offering. I'm still bringing him that offering. It's the best offering I've had my life for his. It's the best deal I ever made in life. <laughs> I came from beyond the rivers and beyond that live stream of death to the live stream of life. John chapter 7, verse 38. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. That's what I want to flow out of my life. Rivers of living water. There's a live stream of life. There's a live stream of death. And we're on the live stream 24-7. Right there where you are, I wonder if you would just bow your head and just close your eyes for a moment and just Focus on the Lord Jesus. There's a lot going on in my head, man. Way, way more than I want to. Way more than I've ever had going on in my mind before. Live stream, notifications, Facebook, FaceTime, Instagram, all these things. You're a sinner just like me. The only difference between me and you is that I'm letting Jesus pay for mine. I got in that live stream. I'm never getting out. He shed his blood for you and I on the cross of Calvary. They buried him. He rose again on the third day so that he could start this live stream. Lived a sinless life. Lived a life that was free of sin. So that he could give you and I a victory over sin whenever it comes against our life. I'm not perfect. I'm trusting in his perfection, though. You're here and you want to give your life to Jesus right there where you sit. I want you just to pray with me right now. You can get down on your knees if you like. You can stand up if you like. God's not interested in the position of your body. He's interested in the position of your heart. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you as I am, a sinner, 
with no hope except the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus, I believe that you died for me on the cross at Calvary. That they buried you and that you rose again on the third day. I want you to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Help me to forgive others who have sinned against me. Help me to forgive myself for the sins I've done against myself. I want my life to be moved from a live stream of death to a live stream of life. Help me to see the live stream that my life is 24-7. Let me trust in your completeness. Let me trust in that river of life that continually flows from the throne of God to me. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to do one more thing right now. Because we are leaves in the heel of the nations. If you have sickness in your body, just as a point of contact, just place a hand on it. It's on your shoulder, place your shoulder, your heart, it's your back, it's your stomach. Place it wherever you've got pain. Place it. Believe, believe for healing. This is the live stream. God's not limited by time or distance. I want you to pray with me right now. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I want you to bring those healing leaves to my life. I want you to heal my body. God, you're able to even make the salt sea bring life to that. Bring life to my body. I bind up every spirit of hell and darkness that is coming against my life and my body. Father, I command healing to my body right now in the name of Jesus. Not anything that I can do, but I know that you can do all things, Lord. I believe that the blood of Jesus makes me whole. The blood of Jesus continues to move in my life. Father, please, once again, please show me your glory once again. As I step into the live stream, help me to step beyond my ankles. Help me to step beyond my knees. Help me to step beyond my neck. Help me to swim in the river of life that you have for me. I'm asking you, God, in the name of Jesus, help me to be leaves of healing to the nations. If you have prayed that prayer, either of healing or whether you prayed to receive Jesus for the first time, whether you're a backslider, and for whatever reason, you went back to the live stream of death. And now you want to go into the live stream of life and you pray. You can go to our website and go to the website. Go to the website one first. Website one first. Website one first. Website one first. Thank you. Okay. If you go there, like I said, there's lots of things that can help you there. And I encourage you to do that. But if you click on Get Involved, you'll come down to New Believers, and you'll come up with a form that you can fill out. And then you send that to us, and then I'll be able to get back in touch with you. Or you get back in touch with us, my phone number's on there, you can find my phone number, and I'd much rather talk to you than text. I tell everybody, my friends talk to me, they don't just text me. All right. Thank you for coming tonight. I pray God's favor, God's blessing upon your life, and that you flow in the live stream, a new live stream, the live stream of life, in Jesus' name. We're going to sing that song, Lift Jesus Higher, and we count ourselves to sing. Lift Jesus Higher, Lift Jesus Higher, Lift them up for the world to